This is Twit. The Apple iPhone vulnerability story is interesting. And last week, in a lengthy and painstakingly detailed 30,000-word report, which, which was written by, Pro, by Google's Project Zero's Ian Beer. Ian is someone we've, whose work we've covered through the years, so his name may be familiar to our listeners. We learned, thanks to this report that Ian wrote, how he had spent the first half of this year. Yes, six months. Um, but before explaining, Ian quotes from the February 2020 Offensive Con conference, during which its keynote speaker said, quote, exploits are the closest things to magic spells we experience in the real world. Construct the right incantation and gain remote control over a device. So with that, with that quote, that sort of this opens Ian's expose, uh, which he began by saying for six months, of 2020, while locked down in the corner of my bedroom, surrounded by my lovely screaming children, I've been working on a magic spell of my own. He says, no, sadly not an incantation to convince the kids to sleep in until 9 a.m. every morning, but instead a wormable radio proximity exploit which allows me to gain complete control over any iPhone in my vicinity. He said, view all the photos, read all the email, copy all the private messages, and monitor everything which happens on those phones in real time. So, in other words, in the midst of distractions from his screaming kids, he successfully discovered and then fully developed a working remote, over-the-air, zero-click, total compromise of any Apple iPhone. Um, and doing so was pretty much everything that Apple, as we know, has gone to such extremes to first totally prevent, or if failing that, than to at least raise the bar of exploitation engineering so high as to make it incredibly difficult to weaponize. Yet, Ian succeeded. <clears throat> In his own words, describing the situation, he wrote, of course, an iPhone isn't designed to allow people to build capabilities like this. So what went so wrong that it was possible. He said, unfortunately, it's the same old story. A fairly trivial buffer overflow programming error in C++ code in the kernel parsing untrusted data exposed to remote attackers. He said, in fact, this entire exploit uses just a single memory corruption vulnerability to compromise the flagship iPhone 11 Pro device. With just this one issue, I was able to defeat all the mitigations in order to remotely gain native code execution and kernel memory read and write. He said, relative to the size and complexity of these code bases of major tech companies, you know, like Samsung, Google, Apple, any of Amazon, any of the big guys. He said, the sizes of the security teams dedicated to proactively auditing their product's source code to look for vulnerabilities are very small. He said, Android and iOS are complete custom tech stacks. It's not just kernels and device drivers, but dozens of attacker reachable apps hundreds of services, and thousands of libraries running on devices with customized hardware and firmware. And in fact, a little bit later, we'll be talking about one particular library over on the Google side. So, in other words, with today's 
massive custom code bases and more focus naturally being placed upon the fun side of designing and shipping new features over the drudgery of examining code for vulnerabilities, it's inevitable that these systems will incorporate a wide range of flaws of varying severity. You know, everyone knows that generically bugs of all kinds are being patched constantly. That's, you know, every, every, two, every second Tuesday is a patch Tuesday and my, my Microsoft fixes a hundred plus bugs of varying severity. So sobering though it is, it should come as no surprise and it doesn't that some of them, some few will be really bad. Now, the good news is that this is Apple, not Android. So the handsets were all updated back in May with the move to iOS 13.5. And that's, as you noted over on MacBreak Weekly, Leo, the same update that gave us the, uh, the, um, the COVID uh, you know, proximity tracking tech. That was back then in May. Um, so at that time, this breathtaking vulnerability was quietly eliminated. It wasn't, as far as we know, ever used. But of course, you never do know about these things. You know, the fact that it was there um, raised some questions yeah. in Ian's mind, which, which we'll talk about. I think um, a nation state might well have had. One of the reasons I think this is, it seems like a natural place to investigate. You're going yes. to talk about the, the exploit. And I'll, I won't uh, yes. talk about it. But so, that's where I would have looked too. So. Yes, the heart of the problem that Ian uncovered was in a proprietary Apple Wi-Fi based peer-to-peer -peer mesh network protocol, again, of their own design, known as AWDL, Apple Wireless Direct Link. Being a peer-to-peer mesh protocol handler, AWDL needed to monitor and parse all Wi-Fi network traffic. Parsers are a form of interpreter in that they examine a flow of data for the purpose of attempting to understand it and to see whether it's relevant to them. What Ian uncovered was that Apple's AWDL parser contained a flaw. Knowing that and arranging to exploit it in the environment that Apple has deliberately worked to make so hostile are two very different things, but Ian succeeded. Um, and I should note that his paper, is, I mean, his write-up uh, is just amazingly thorough. Um, it is a it is a step-by-step walk through what it takes to do this and uh, I, I would commend it. I have a link in the show notes. Uh, commend it to anyone who's interested in like how you go with Apple with and in, against all the mitigations that they have put in place. Everything that they have done to like, okay, even if you knew there was a problem, sorry, you can't get to it from here. Um, Ian noted that he is one guy who was working alone in his bedroom you know, albeit with some distractions, whereas the world currently contains, to your point, Leo, many powerful, massively resourced nation state, well-organized cyber warfare groups. Ian feels quite certain that when such resources are brought to bear, other currently unknown exploitab uh, exploitable vulnerabilities, maybe this one before he found it, will almost certainly be uh, and maybe are being right now uncovered. So anyway, uh, uh, no need to go into great detail. The, the point was that, uh, t to your point, Leo, you know, here is, here is something that is having to listen to every all to look at Wi-Fi packets. Uh, Ian referred to them earlier as a untrusted, meaning that, you know, that they're not data packets wrapped in a Wi-Fi envelope where you've already established a connection in order for this peer to peer system to work. You know, things that just wander into range 
where you're not exchanging a username and password. You are you're just accepting a a connection among peers. Inherently, something is like sending out a beacon, yeah. and something is is listening to all incoming traffic to see if it's a beacon. And it turns out that he was able to the, the iOS kernel has all of its symbols stripped and symbols are a huge benefit to understanding what's going on it turns out the mac os doesn't it does not th th this region at least doesn't strip symbols which which is very much more useful for developers who need to trace into something or if something crashes you're able to get a sense for where the crash was and it turns out Mac OS and iOS share the same AWDL. So he was able to identify the problem, use the symbols Mac OS had to give him a leg up, and then map that over onto iOS, although he still had to perform the job of exploiting this, you know, turning it from a known vulnerability into a weaponized exploit, uh, again, especially in, in the world that Apple has created to make that well nigh impossible, uh, you know, he was able to do it. So really, really, really cool piece of research. Yeah, I think if you were going to look somewhere, you'd look at AirDrop and say, hmm, that's promising. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you would. I mean, if you depending upon your attack model, if you could briefly get your hands on the phone, then you look at the lightning connector, right, to see like, you know, what you're able to do there. But boy, if and, and, and you made a, the, the point over on MacBreak Weekly that that I mean, this was wormable. Meaning that that's a big the, problem, the, of course. The the contagion could spread, yeah. which meant, I mean, if if somebody wanted to bring down the entire Apple iOS, at least i iPhone ecosystem, they could have launched a worm into an environment. This thing would have jumped from phone to phone everywhere i mean like stick it you know start it off in a you know in a stadium and every iphone will be infected those will then at the end of the game sp spread out all over and infect all the other i devices within wi-fi range i mean and it's like you know you could have shut down iphones globally potentially so that didn't happen because you know Ian Beer Ooh. works for Project Zero. Also, because so. nation states aren't real anxious about sharing their exploits either. <laughs> so, exactly. if, if if you know if Israel or Iraq or Iran or North Korea got had it, they wouldn't have told anybody. Or the NSA. Well, they wouldn't have told. Yeah, anybody. and you have to you have to wonder if when this happened in May, there may have been some people uh, here or abroad saying, "Oh, you know." <coughs> <coughs> oh, darn, somebody else found the thing that we had been using in order to just beautifully infect, you know, targeted eye devices wherever we wanted to. So, but again, uh, look at the number of bugs that are constantly being fixed. As I said, you know, every so often there's a really bad one. Well, that really bad one has been there typically for a long time. So... I think, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about this or that thing that got fixed and whoo, isn't that good? But maybe the, the same guys are, are listening to the podcast going, yeah, Gibson, you just keep thinking that that's a, uh, you know, that, that, that we're in trouble now. We don't care. We have 12 others that uh, allow us to do this.